Welcome, friends, to another episode of Tiffin Box TV. I speak with industry leaders who make it a habit of inspiring others, bridging craft and commerce to help you create a sustainable and creative business. Today's guest is most definitely one you should sit up and pay attention to. Patrick Moreau is quite literally obsessed with story. He believes that story is unparalleled in its ability to bring people together. And so he spends his days telling stories through his filmmaking company called Still Motion. You may have heard of it. And he helps others really being empowered through the storytelling process through a product he calls Muse. We're going to talk about Muse and Still Motion in a little bit, uh, but I want you to understand that things are changing quickly in this business, whether you're a photographer or a videographer. If you aren't paying attention, there's a lot more video now out there. And you, it's not a simple matter of just picking up a video camera and going out and shooting stuff and putting it up on video on YouTube. Uh, you've got to be able to tell stories. And Patrick is like the guy to tell us how to do it. Patrick, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you for such a warm introduction as well. That's very kind of you. Uh, well, I have to tell you, I had some help. Uh, your, your, <laughs> <laughs> your crew is incredible. I love working with your crew. So uh, please give my best to... Uh, the, the folks back home. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves, Patrick, because one of the things I love to know is get to know you as a person. How did you get your start in this whole crazy business? What did you get? What did you do to become who you are? Um, well, we certainly can't cover everything that I've done to become who, who I am. Not um, everything, but I, how did you get I, your I'm start? Trying to figure that, I'm still trying to figure that shit out. Yeah. Uh, but I can say that, you know, a lot of this started in... Um, Ah, I normally start there. Let me start somewhere else. Um, you know what? When I was like 17, I had a real job. I had one real job. And it was like in a factory making cans. I don't even know what the, what, what the stuff was. But you take a can from one side, you put it on a machine, you put it on the other side. And it was like really loud. You couldn't even have music, right? And I would go there <clears throat> and basically try and like beat the quota that I had done the day before. And the QC like manager would come over and like look at these massive volumes that I was doing and would kind of start getting upset that, you know, I was making so many cans. And I didn't know why I was doing it. It was so boring. I hated going to work. But at some point I had maxed out at like 450 cans in a day that I was just like tired. Like it just it made no more sense. There was nowhere else for me to go. Um, so I quit and I just like never came back. And it was interesting because I was 17 and it was, you know, a $25, $30 an hour job in a small town. So it was like good money. But <clears throat> right then I made the decision that like I'm not okay just trading my time for money. I'm not okay just doing something that I don't love, that's not fulfilling me and that I'm not growing in. And so, you know, that's, that's a few years before I started Still Motion or any of that kind of stuff. But it was a really big decision in not going down that path. And no matter what I had to figure out, it was going to be finding something that really uh, fulfilled me. And so went down the psychology path in, uh, at university, um, was going to teach, be a doctor, do all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and that's what just kind of brought me into documentaries and the idea of you know, learning this crazy stuff in psychology and thinking, you know, I can make a film. Like I can make films that would bring this to a larger audience because the problem with academic research is eh, it's hard to get through. You know, and, and people don't, you know, it, it's just not digestible, so people don't really get it. So could we, you know, bring that to more people? Um, and that, that is a microcosm of what story became to me, the, the ability to take things um, and bring them to people in a much more powerful way. Uh, and so it started a journey of starting still motion in wedding films, weddings getting noticed by the NFL, CBS calling us, winning Emmys. Um, and, you know, doing these 30 city tours across the U.S. or uh, workshop tours across Asia and all kinds of stuff like that, um, constantly sharing what we were learning because it was this crazy journey. And again, you know, we came from psychology. It was all about perspective and mm -hmm. people and connections. Right. Um, and that led us to uh, Muse, which is our storytelling process, which is really just answering the question like, what is the biggest thing we can actually do? Uh, and it wasn't gear, it wasn't lighting techniques, it wasn't anything like that. It was like a stepwise process for story, um, which again is, is you know, maybe not at first glance, but it so ties into the roots in psychology of really understanding human connection and giving people just a way to embrace story in whatever medium or whatever way you want to tell a story. So it could be video, it could be still photography, it could be just straight audio as well, but the Muse process works for whoever wants to embrace it. Right. 
Uh, the process works for anybody who would like to make a meaningful connection with their audience. So okay. you, as somebody you know running a podcast, could take the principles and use it to you know craft stories that is going to pull your audience in. Really, it's it's just built on. Um, concepts like empathy and emotion and how do you know in a conversation like this there's things that I can do that are mm -hmm. going to make you feel one way or another sure. if I'm all sad and depressed you're you know not going to be nearly as excited about how this interview is going um, but if I'm excited and passionate you're like oh this is going to be good we're going to yes. get lots of views yes um, absolutely there, there are you know there, there are fundamental kind of human laws if you will or these um, you know these underlying forces of how we actually connect and it's looking at the science of that and, and then how you apply that to story in things like character and plot, structure, um, in the places you take them, and, and in the meaning, the purpose behind it all. And so we just we give you a framework on how to work with that. Um, but yeah, we've had people plan their weddings and create a, a narrative around like the event. Um, films, photographers, albums, you know, creating a story um, much more out of that versus documenting an event but telling a story. Uh, talks. I wrote my TEDx talk using the process and building it out that way. Um, really anywhere that you want to use story as a vehicle for connection. Do you, would, you, would you say that it's in our DNA to be able to either receive stories or tell stories? Is that part of our, our DNA as a human to, to be a storyteller? Or do you, do you, <sighs> That's a tricky one. Or do you, do you, the, feel, the, or, or do you feel you feel there has to be some training behind it? Uh, well, the, 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 the simple answer is yes. In many ways, we are naturally born storytellers. We're often naturally born shitty storytellers um, because we, we most often talk about what's most important, like ourselves. And that's not what our audience really cares about. Our audience is about, you know, why does this matter to me and my sphere, the people that matter to me? Um, but you, you, what you find is that kids as young as like two to three, they start taking their toys and they create narratives. They create stories, imaginary worlds, right? right. That is the early, um, the early kind of underpinnings of, of story. Um, and so it, it's very natural. But I don't think that it's, it's necessarily that we're born storytellers. I think it's much more that we're, we're born to find connections. That's connections between me and you and connections between um, elements. You know, different elements. And so it's like, if I give you three random words, dog, walk, night, and you just think about dog, walk, night. Most people, if you just like, if you step out of the interview and you think about it for a second, you can picture the night sky and walking a dog and you can hear the sound of the gravel and everything. Um, you create a story. You, you tie them together when it's just three random words. Right. But like our brain is hardwired to create those connections. Gotcha. And so uh, the craft then is about intentionally building those connections so that I can make you feel something and I can I can bring you to something I care about. Uh, you've done so well with still motion. Uh, you know, I just we if those of us here in the U.S. have watched the uh, Super Bowl, there was an ad where Ron Howard was in, the, in, in one of your uh, commercials. Right. Uh, and it was quick, and but it was just so jam-packed with great, uh, essentially, storytelling within, I think, 30 seconds or whatever it was. Uh, what is your end goal in terms of telling stories? Is it to bring those elements all together so rapidly, so quickly, so compactly that people get it quickly? Or is it to walk people through an entire, almost an epic in a way? I mean, what... With with video, I mean, with with TV, you you're sort of constrained by time, of course. But if you're on YouTube, for instance, you could do this over series, over several yeah. several mm. weeks, months, whatever, right? So, what is your take on that? We we always go back to story first, which okay. is just the idea that you know the story should drive all of the decisions and um, you know it's something we work with our clients on a lot, where it's like don't be uh, don't put yourself into a box thinking that, oh, we're making this for web. It has to be 90 seconds or okay. um, it's, it's whatever. Uh, even when we took on a feature-length documentary um, for a nonprofit, you know, like that funded us making a full movie, we said, this could be 20 minutes, it could be two hours. Like, let us do the process and what we're going to do is tell the strongest story that is going to achieve your goals. That's, that's what we're all about, right? That's, that's why we all do this is <laughs> we've got some purpose behind uh, we want people to think some way or feel something or whatever it is. So um, I, I believe that you need to remain open. You need to listen and, and kind of allow that to come to you. Uh, the worst thing you can do is 
not respect your audience well enough to value their time and include fluff because ah, it had to be five minutes and I only had three minutes of story. Or I'm not actually going to give you the full you know, breadth so that you can really get it and have that emotional experience because I had to fit it into 30 seconds. Um, okay. So I would say that you know, uh, I, I really subscribe to, to removing the container. And we do stuff from 60 to 90 seconds all the way up to films that are 60 to 90 minutes. Um, and and we, uh, we're actually we're, we're wrestling with that right now on our own web series as we're getting episodes come out at 11, 12 minutes. And we keep having to go, like, forget the rules. Like, if that's what the story is, right. you know, we'll find a way to connect people to the content um, as opposed to trying to fit it into a container. Great, great answer. Uh, as I introduce you, I sort of, placed a warning out, I guess, a, announced a warning uh, to my fellow photographers that things are going to video. Uh, a lot of photographers are moving to video, uh, yet you still need to be a storyteller. What advice would you give uh, a solopreneur, somebody who ha doesn't have a production team of 15, 20 people to work with, but is one or two two person sort of studio, to be able to make these really well-crafted storytelling videos for their clients, what would you tell them? Well, I think uh, first, uh, one of the important things to realize is that it's not necessarily a shift from photo to video. What that is in a much deeper level is a shift to stronger storytelling. And that's not about a debate over photo versus video or, or the merits of anything. Yeah. Both crafts have a lot of merits. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. the, re the reality is that video is just a multi-sensory medium and when you can see and you can hear you have so much more levels and you've got moving images right and it's it's why okay. you can you know look look at the revenue that you know some blockbusters and films can make the draw you can pull in when you have a story that really is an emotional experience um, so I say that because I think the, the important thing to remember is that storytelling is at the core of it and it's a buzzword and people are gonna throw that around and use it in so many different ways but you can also use it as a way of releasing yourself from feeling like you need to have a lot of gear and it needs to be perfect okay. or it needs to be anything like that um, because when you can tell a real honest story that is unique and original to the people you're working with if we're you know if we're in the wedding sphere you know to the couple we're working with um, that will transcend all of the gear you know, for sure. So it doesn't, you know, it's so easy to get drawn into, you know, the red epics and the drones and all of that kind of crap. Um, but what it really comes down to is who are these people? What makes them different? What do they really want? What are they afraid of? Like, how do we embrace their humanity and their originality and say something about them? And if you do that on your iPhone, you will make people feel something way more than, you know, three minutes of the most beautiful drone shots of, you know, that are devoid of personality and don't have a, don't have real people in them. So um, I, I, I really advocate for letting the gear get out of the way. So that means starting simple, you know, a camera like a C100 is, is tops for us. Um, just because you can run audio into it and it's got wide dynamic range and you can do so much with it. Um, or if you're, you know, uh, in both mediums using uh, the Sony and the Canon DSLRs, whichever one is most comfortable for you, um, but putting again the story first. Okay. What allows you to move quickly and stay in front of things versus worrying about the codecs and all of those other things? Um, because so often that takes over, and then it's so much about a pretty image. And then what happens is it becomes homogenized. Awesome. You shoot everything pretty, but not every not every person is just naturally pretty or happy or romantic. Um, and it becomes more a reflection of us and our ideals and what we think this should be instead of who the people actually are. Um, and that's I think that's a disservice to them and. To, to your craft, you know, you're just not, you're not really saying anything original. So um, start small, start with basic gear that allows you to be comfortable. Don't worry about going crazy technical. Things like clean audio are always important just in allowing the viewer to connect to your story. Sure. Um, but you don't have to have a lot of crew or a lot of gear to really focus on like knowing somebody and saying something about them in a strong way. Wow, that's great. Wonderful answer. Let's jump right into Muse storytelling. Uh, it's it's something uh, that you've started as a way to essentially teach people how to do this uh, on their own. Uh, you, you lead them through a, an entire process, of course. So talk to us a little about Muse storytelling for, for my audience. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, we really start with the idea of what is story and why does it matter? 
right? And story is literally the retelling of events and me sharing an experience as a way of you being able to come to your own conclusions and connect more deeply versus me versus the contrast is often facts and figures. You need to buy this product. You need to do this. Look at the price point, that kind of thing, right? Story is instead going, oh, look what I did. And then you can kind of go, oh, maybe I should check that out. Um, so it really is the craft of creating stories. And if you were going to learn something like baking, you wanted to be a master chef, you'd probably have to go out and learn the different food groups, different ingredients, and how those like combine and work together on you know, the palate and how, how they, you know, the human body reacts to them. Um, so we approach this the same way, looking at story and going, there are four foundational ingredients or elements, which we call the four pillars of story, people, places, purpose, and plot. Uh, and so what we do is we just work through and we show you the role of each one of those, People, as an example, are all about emotional connection. Um, purpose is about giving your viewer meaning. It's about being remembered. And then we give you a tool, an objective metric, for building that out in your story. So every time you take on a story, you slice it into those four ingredients, and then you stepwise develop your characters, what makes them a strong character, the places, the locations you're taking your viewer, uh, the plot, the structure, the elements that are included, the order in which you're including them, and then the purpose, what the story says. Um, and we'll just help you work through that in a very objective, stepwise way, which uh, can make you much more intentional. Because now you know what you're, like why your decision matters, if you're filming this or this or including this or that. And um, it just it really is an empowering thing to make the decision with intent instead of just what a lot of us do, what I did for years. <laughs> you just randomly put it together and try and find it. Right. right? I'm going to shoot everything or, and I'm going to just pull it together and then like put it out there and go, I hope it works. <laughs> right, right. Um, so you've, so created, you've, cre you've created a system essentially, right? Process, a methodology. A process. Okay, awesome. Yep. And it, it's worked for still motion and this is something that you would prescribe for anybody who's starting out uh, trying to be a video storyteller or just a regular story, any storyteller really to use these four pillars in their storytelling process. Am I right? Yeah, I, it's helped still motion win Emmys. It's been presented at the United Nations to global business leaders. Uh, we trained a group of senior creative directors at Apple. Um, it's taught in a handful of colleges and universities as their official like filmmaking curriculum. Um, so it's definitely, and I say that because there's a lot of online education out there, and you have to be careful who you trust and what you trust. And education is, and it is a um, there's a lot of responsibility with that. And so, you know, there, I think there's a lot to say for the credibility um, that uh, of the people that are using and and using the process. Um, and so, absolutely, you know, it's it's uh, um, an online platform with downloadable worksheets and uh, exercises you can try. And we have software that actually helps you build your stories as well. But it's it's really just about learning the ideas more than anything else. Uh, learning what story really means and then getting a framework for being able to work through it from you know, A to Z as you build out your story. Um, and this is really, the, the one thing that's important to note is this is before you show up. Like the idea is that you're building your story before you show up for the interview today or before I show up to the couple's wedding or the interview. It's all about that pre-production, the idea that you know, a remarkable story is written well before the cameras roll. Like you're building the story in advance through your research, through your listening, through the questions you're asking. Um, and so we help you do that in a very strong way. Awesome. And now you have uh, storytelling for documentary for to uh, people, for commercial folks, for folks who are doing weddings. And then you ha also have two other things, storytelling masterclass and, a, and what's called Remarkable Interviews, which is a course that I'm actually a part of. Tell us a little bit more about uh, perhaps the storytelling masterclass. Is that something that that you'd recommend for photographers to get into? Um, you know, what you realize with online learning is that most people don't finish. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who, you know, are listening to this and they've signed up for all kinds of things, whether it's a free email, like downloadable ebook, and you just don't finish it. And so the idea with the master class is that there's accountability and that it's based on action. So that means that everybody in the master class is actually going to create their own passion project, a film. Oh, wow. And they're going to, they're going to find it, develop it, and deliver it inside of the masterclass with a community of filmmakers across the world that are supporting them in that. So you have a team of people that just give you feedback. You have a mentorship advisor that actually works through with you every week. Um, and it's broken down into small ch small steps over 14 weeks. So it's not this crazy thing where, you know, you obviously, you, we have full-time jobs, we have everything else. Um, but in actually 
executing on something that you care about. You get reconnected to the reason why you do this. You can grow. You can like put yourself out there. You don't have to play it safe. Um, and it's, it's where the holes appear. It's where the gaps appear. When I try and take a concept I've learned about and actually put it into practice, I go, oh, wait. I don't quite get how this applies here or I'm missing something. And that's where deeper learning happens because then you figure it out. You ask questions. You work through that. Right. Um, so it's, it's really about learning by doing and us helping you craft something uh, which we believe will be the strongest story you've ever told up till now. You know, like that's the goal we're setting for all of our participants is we're going to work together to tell the strongest story you've ever told. Wow. Uh, sounds fascinating. And I'm sure uh, at a given your track record and your really your love and passion for storytelling. It's, I mean, I can tell from, from just speaking with you, this is like the thing to do, uh, not because, you know, it brings you all kinds of, you know, uh, awards or uh, rewards, but it's, it's deep inside of you. This is very important for you. T lastly, last question to you. Why is storytelling important to you? Personally. Why is it important to me? Yes. <clears throat> because I think that uh, the, the reality is that there's a lot of things that I care about that if you just try and tell people about them, they often don't care. And so I can give you the example of uh, my mother. She had bipolar. And for 15 years, I struggled with you know, having a mother who was bipolar and would fly to Jordan. She got imprisoned in Jordan. Um, smuggles herself into Syria in the back of a taxi cab, like these crazy things. And um, last year she committed suicide, you know? And so it's this, oh, wow. it's this crazy, um, crazy, very intense journey of, you know, dealing with uh, a parent that has bipolar. Now, how do we take that experience and have that matter to other people? How do we take that and allow it to help other people? How do we, how do we, you know, because it's, it's hard. It's hard to deal with all of those things. And, if you just start sharing the facts, like this is terrible, our mental health system is broke, whatever, you right away go, ooh, like I'm uncomfortable. Like don't tell me how to think or feel or what to do. And there's so much crap out there that we don't want to be bombarded with another cause we have to support or more money or whatever. Um, but story really is that tool that I can share something that I experienced with her and take you on that journey. And all of a sudden you can come to your own conclusions about what you might want to do or what, what you might want to support. And so I have that own, my own experience of things like bipolar, of happiness, of materialism, things that are really important to me and that I've done a lot of research in that I'd like to bring to people. And I understand that the best way to do that is by stories, very personal, intimate stories of individuals who have experienced things so that you can come to your own conclusions. And um, in, in going on that journey myself, I, I believe that we all have that. I believe we all have those things that we care about but what we also have is a communication problem we don't understand how to carefully communicate and we often just blabber and ram ramble and just put it out there whereas stories about kind of pulling it back in listening intentionally designing an experience an emotional experience that connects people to the things that you care about um, and I don't know that there's anything more important in today's world than being intentional about how we connect people to the th to the things that are really important wow uh, just goosebumps right here, man. Thank you so much for for explaining the the sort of reason for behind all that you're doing. You know, really. I mean, it's phenomenal, I, and I applaud you for it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I would love to have more of my colleagues join. Uh, you know, the Muse storytelling experience as well, so they can learn to do this better and learn to share their lives better as well with, with their loved ones. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. We have, a, we have a, a, a free course. We'll make sure you have the link when you put this up there. So awesome. there's great. a free mini news course that people can just dive in and uh, gives them great storytelling techniques right away, and uh, you don't have to do anything. Fantastic. So uh, great to get people in and give them uh, some free content and check, check us out, see if it works for you. Awesome. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.